hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. Before I begin on the stories, I just wanted to mention, if you have your own personal scary story that you would like to send me for me to possibly narrate here on the channel, you can do so by sending it to southerncannibal.com. So if you have a personal true scary story that you'd like to share, please consider sending it my way. Now that all that's out of the way, let's begin. My name is Steve, and this just happened two weeks ago in Tucson, Arizona. I had been talking to a girl named Alexa that I had recently met off the Latino dating app called Chispa. It was in a small town most people have never heard of called Rio Rico. It was a Sunday, and I had planned to take an hour drive into the city of Tucson to do some DoorDash because I'd been strapped for cash. That is when I get a call from Alexa asking if I could drop her off at a friend's house in Tucson on the way there. So I agreed, and we were off. When we finally arrived, I had dropped her off and began my day. It wasn't until it started getting dark around 7.30 p.m. that I had received a message on my WhatsApp from Alexa, saying that she and her friend were going to visit her friend's mother and her sister, and they were five minutes down the road, and to pick her up there in an hour. So I agree and continue working, when about 30 minutes go by, and I receive a live location message from Alexa, explaining that she had forgot her purse at her friend's, and that some friend of the family had offered to take her to grab the purse and come right back. But once the purse was picked up, she said they were going in a completely different direction, and that this guy was apparently telling her he was going to be taking her back to his house instead. She then told me that they were in a gray pickup truck. In that moment, I hauled ass to the location she sent me, but every time I'd reach it, she would no longer be there due to the car constantly being in motion, until I finally caught a break and saw them leaving one of those drive through liquor stores. Alexa must have seen me through the rearview mirror because she got the guy to park on the side of the road, which gave me just enough time to cut him off with my little Kia Soul. Luckily, her door was unlocked, and she was able to jump out of the truck and get into my car, and then speed away. This may not seem like the scariest situation, or the typical online dating story, but in that moment, I had so many different emotions rushing through me. Once I had her in the car, she started screaming and crying at the thought of what could have happened to her. I'm really grateful I was able to save her. I've been in many different scary and sketchy scenarios, but fearing for someone you care about safety is a hundred times more terrifying. I lived in Los Banos, California around two years ago. It's a tiny farming town. I've been on Tinder out of boredom just to see what's out there. I came across this good looking guy who was about two to three years older than me. I was barely 20. We'll call him Steve. I swiped right and we matched. I noticed that he was maybe less than a mile away. I was pretty cautious when talking to guys due to toxic relationships beforehand. We started chatting and for some reason, I wasn't super chatty with Steve as I usually am with others. I found out Steve was going to the police academy. Within a few days of chatting, he asked if I wanted to hang out. I felt an off feeling, but still agreed, only if it was in a very public setting. The day before we met up, Steve asked around 10pm if he could meet me outside of my house. Right there, I knew that there was something up with this guy. I said no, and mentioned that we would meet the next day. He kept trying to convince me to say yes, and he brought up how his ex was the same way. Big red flags. I stood my ground and said no once again. The next day comes, and I get stood up, which I was expecting. I just moved on with my day and thought that was that. I was able to see who liked me on Tinder, and I saw that it was Steve yet again. My dumb young self matched again with them, and I called him out on his creepy behavior. He then mentioned how he wanted me, and how I should want him back as well, since he was good looking. 
I laughed it off and blocked him. A few days went by, and I had noticed again that Stephen made a different account this time, and liked me again. This time, however, it said he was in the military. I swiped right once again, and I told him to leave me alone and stop making new accounts to try and reach me. Side note, I never gave my number or any social media to randos online due to this reason. He again gave the excuse that he really wanted me, and we could work things out and be friends with benefits. I immediately said no, and mentioned getting the police involved. He left me alone, and until I saw him at my job a few months later. I hid behind some stuff, and just waited until he left. I made eye contact, unfortunately, but we did have masks on at the time, so I played it off. It seemed like he didn't even recognize me, and that was that. Well, I found out from a few co-workers that they had talked to Steve, and that they also had a really off feeling about him. But how he seemed sweet, and how he was asking for social media, but that none of them gave him anything. Well, I told them all my story, and let's just say we all dodged that really scary bullet. In 2020, I, a 26-year-old female at the time, received a friend request from a man. Let's call him Matthew. He asked me out, and I went out with him. We went out on two dates, and everything was honestly going well, until we talked about going on a third date. I went to the place that we agreed to meet up at, and I ended up waiting for him for like two hours before he ghosted me and he then ghosted me for two and a half months. He started to unblock me on every social media site that there was, and he wanted to get back together. I agreed, but I had my guard up. Unfortunately, I ended up regretting this decision. He continued to start dating other girls behind my back, and this was my last straw, but this is when the stalking began. I broke it off with him, and I let his side chicks have him, because I refused to be a side piece. Well, he didn't contact me again for five months. Fast forward to December of 2021. I had been getting non-stop messages and calls from Matthew. He had been calling me for over 80 times a day on each social media site, on normal calls, WhatsApp calls, and even sending me over 300 messages every day. He has since changed his number and continues to contact me. He's been following me to my work since February of 2022. He's also been calling my boyfriend and my boss nonstop. It's gotten so bad that the HR manager and risk manager at my work had to call me into the office and they said that I have to lawyer up because they want to take this man to court for harassment and stalking, which I did. And in the country I live in, South Africa, any person who contravenes such an order is guilty of an offense and liable on conviction to a fine or imprisonment for a period not exceeding five years. So I gave all of my evidence to my lawyer, and the HR and risk manager gave all the CCTV footage to my lawyer. Plus in April, Matthew got arrested for having cocaine and meth in his car. Since his arrest, I hadn't heard from him until the court date for the harassment and stalking. Well, Christmas came early. He got 15 years for possession of cocaine and meth, five years for stalking and harassment, and he's going to be in jail for 20 years total, and I'm so happy about it. Matthew, please stay away from me, my boyfriend, my coworkers, and my family. We will never, ever get back together. I really hope you'll enjoy prison. And remember... Don't drop the soap. I'm 23 years old, and I've had the worst dating experiences. In 2020, I was healing from a very bad and abusive relationship, which really sucked the life out of me, and that guy wouldn't even let me break up. He would blackmail me, but I ended it, and I went on being single for two years. In the end of 2020, I started playing online video games because of the isolation. 
I was getting bored. At first, I wouldn't speak with any of the other players, but one guy caught my eye. We were playing the game and he started talking to me, and one thing led to another, and we ended up becoming friends in the game. Let's call him John. John started playing games with me continuously, and we introduced ourselves to each other. He said that he was from Sweden and living in a hostel for study reasons, and he told me the name of his school. I thought it was weird at the time, and I felt something was wrong, but I figured it's because I have trust issues, and I just pushed that thought to the back of my mind. We became very close in a small amount of time, which was the first red flag. We started talking on Insta, and John had a weird profile, like he wouldn't post any picture of his, and his profile was random, which included no followers and he was only following like two to three people. His name wasn't his as well, and he would use the name and photos of his favorite character from the originals, a TV show. Anyways, we started chatting on Insta, and he would always ask about me, but wouldn't talk about himself, which was odd, but I thought I'm also a stranger to him, and maybe he would have trust issues too, so I didn't push. One day, I had asked him to send me pictures of his hostel, because I was also living in a hostel, and I was really interested in how they live in Sweden. He then sent me pictures which I checked from Pinterest and Google. They were random snaps from the internet, and different hostel profiles. This should have been the biggest red flag. I confronted him, and he made the excuse that he didn't want to share any info, and I also didn't want to be rude about it. At that time, I should have stopped talking to him then and there, but I was fucking stupid. Anyways, two to three months later, it's 2021, and we started dating. We formed a big squad in our game, and there were people from all over the world, and it was honestly really amazing, because ever since childhood, I always went through very bad experiences, and only had one or two friends. Everything was going perfectly, we would talk on video, and we were so in love with one another. I even told my family about him and got my sister involved. One day, my sister had asked me about John and some information about him. I told her, and she had searched his school online, but there was no such school in Sweden. I was shocked, and I started doing some searching myself. He had sent me one snap of him in his school uniform, and it had a logo on it but it was blurry. I was able to find the info, and I was shocked when I found out that his school was in my own country, and not even that, but it was also a one hour drive away from me. This whole time, this guy was lying to me about his whole identity. At the time, I was 21, and he said he was 19. I confronted him. He then manipulated the whole situation and said sorry multiple times then manipulated me as well. At the time though, I was really falling in love with him, and I got attached. But then he came out clean, and said that he did used to live in Sweden, and that he then moved to my city, because it's his hometown, and that him and his family had apparently lost money and went broke, so they had to come back. I said that I wanted to meet him, but he would always make excuses. He said that we would meet in October on my birthday. I stopped nagging after that. In two to three months, everything changed. His behavior and the way he respected me just vanished. First he would cry about how his parents are such bad people and didn't want him to study anymore, and then changing his story and said they don't have any money. I was so invested in him and wanted to help him fix things that I was so blinded by my own affectionate nature. I would talk to him day and night and would always be supportive. I was so frustrated that I gave him a big amount of money just so he could continue to study for his GED. In my country, the currency is called lakh. He needed three lakh for GED, but I gave him one lakh. Stupid, I know, but at the time, I was fully manipulated or I guess you can say I was being dumb and naive. That's not only it though. I gave him money on multiple occasions 
and for many different things. I also sent him gifts and stuff. Everyone always told me that he was using me, but I wouldn't listen. And one year, he managed to distance me from every friend and every person I knew. I would only talk to him and play games with him. He was honestly very disturbed and continuously telling me that he was depressed and that he doesn't have the rest of the money for his GED. I told him I'll see what I can do and see if I can get the money from my dad to give it to him. He was becoming weird though. He would no longer be respectful and he wouldn't let me in the call when I wanted to get off. He completely changed his personality. He did a full 180 and he wasn't the same person that I was talking to in the start. It led to a lot of fights and we would always disrespect each other and it got very toxic. I said I wanted to break up and I'd finally had enough with him. He would say sorry and cry and he said he would change and he would change for some time but he would always get back to his usual ways and the cycle just went on and on. This led to March of 2022 and he became a very shitty person. He would say shitty and racist things and would always disrespect me and whenever I would ask him to meet he would say that he didn't have enough money or that his mom's very strict. That type of bullshit. Keep in mind, I haven't met this guy in person not once and we've been dating for at least a year now. He started throwing around love bombs and how he would marry me and that's why he's trying to study and start his business, etc. I was exhausted, both mentally and physically. At this time, my whole life completely revolved around him. I wouldn't sleep much. I was helping him study and solving all of his online tests, playing games with them, and also talking 24-7. I was also a medical student last year, and at the time, I was working five days, and I also had classes on the weekends. I finally had enough, and the next time he asked me about money, I told him no, because I was really tired of being a mother to him. When I told him I had no money, he literally changed in three days. He stopped calling and texting me. I was honestly shocked, but I didn't text or call him, and I was really wanting to see what he would do. He would be online, but he wouldn't talk to me. Then whenever I would get online in the game, he would instantly go offline. Well, he ended up calling me after about 10 days like nothing ever happened and he told me he was going through a really rough time right now, and he can't date. That we could be friends, though. I was totally pissed at this point, and I told him to fuck off. I didn't want to only be friends. I mean, what the fuck was I doing for this whole one year? Taking care of him and such. I then cut the call, and I expected him to call back and say sorry, but he didn't. Then within about two weeks... All of my friends had totally stopped talking to me. I was confused, and I contacted one of my friends who told me that I had betrayed John. John told them lies about me and blamed everything on me about the breakup. My friends didn't even know my side of the story, and they all left me. I called John, and I asked him what the fuck he's doing telling all our mutual friends, and he denied everything. His replies were so precise that I couldn't even fight or have a comeback. He was a total narcissist at the time. I told him that I didn't want to ruin what we have, but he said he didn't want to date anymore. I asked him what I did wrong, and he just said really confusing things, like how I was really disrespectful and controlling to him. He was completely lying and turning all the blame on me, and then he left me. He said if I wanted to be friends, that's okay but not a girlfriend. I cut the call, and after some time, I regrettably started stalking him. I found so many things that shocked me. One, he replaced me with another woman who was giving him money, and I ended up contacting the place where he said he was getting his GED. They confirmed that he isn't enrolled there, and he told me the whole course needs to be one lakh and 30,000. I have all the proof as well. I also found many details about him that were really shocking and confirmed that our whole relationship was based on lies and that he was only using me for money. Also, 
I ended up finding out that he was a minor and that he wasn't 19 years old. He was six years younger than me and he played me very well. I know this story was all over the place and I apologize for that, but I'm sharing the story to possibly help others from making the same mistakes I did as well as prevent themselves from ever ending up in a situation like this. Please stay safe out there.